This video I'm going to go over how to create a trip and how to import bookings from suppliers that Vacation CRM is integrated with. Uh, I will make several other videos in the, the coming days and weeks for other solutions as far as suppliers that we are not integrated with or suppliers that work with the stripper but this one is focused on how to import bookings from a supplier. So. Uh, if you're a new user, hopefully you watched my other video that I just created on how to create a profile. So I'm going to use that same profile here. We've got David Lewis and his family members are linked to him. Um, that's always step one in entering a booking is you have to create the profile. So that's in a different video. But continuing on from that one, now we want to add the actual booking details in. So you can see right now he has zero trips under his profile. So the first step is I'm going to add a new trip to the lead passengers profile and so I click add new trip and that's going to take me to the create trip screen now one thing right away that you want to do here is you'll see these additional attendees here um, if you are missing anyone that's going on this trip with in this case David there's not on here you need to go back and uh, create the profiles or link the profiles to that lead passenger but here let's just say that his wife and daughter are both going with him on this trip so we're going to check the boxes for next to their names and then we're going to move down to the trip information now this is just the very basic initial stages of putting a booking in so there are some things you cannot do at this stage but go ahead and fill out what you can as of right now so for trip name you can do whatever format you want I like to do something like this so it's what it is where it is and when it is that way if you have a client with repeat trips under their profile right away when you see a list of all of them you can tell what is what just by the trip names and then I need to select the status here now this is one of the most important things to select throughout the system because the status determines a lot of when and where the trip shows up throughout the system uh, what reports this trip will be included in uh, which automated emails will go out to the client so it's again it's very important so don't skip this uh, I personally like to put them in prior to deposit, so after it's been booked, I have a booking number, but I haven't put any money down, so I'm going to select a waiting deposit. And for the type here, we will select uh, family vacation. Now for new users, if you're an admin user, when you see a lot of these drop downs here like this, um, if there's a category that's not in here that you want to add, you can certainly do that. I will have a, a separate video created for that, but just know that in most cases you can add items to drop downs. One place where I don't recommend it would be the status, the trip status, because the status is tied to so many things throughout the system. You can't just create your own. The system will let you as of right now, but it doesn't work very well because it doesn't know what that new status actually means. So it doesn't know if it should send emails to the client for different situations. So I would stick with the statuses that come with it for this. And for the destination, we are going to say that is Mexico. And the only other things you could really do at this point, you could put in the final payment due date, the trip date, trip duration. You cannot enter a total or how much has been paid or balance due. Those are all grayed out. Now, since in this example, we're specifically talking about a booking that we're going to import, we can actually leave these items blank. But if you are manually entering from a supplier that we are not integrated with, you might want to go ahead and put this stuff in. But I'm going to leave it blank for right now, and I'm just going to click Create. So now we've got the trip created, but if I scroll down, you can see I have no reservations, no payments, no invoices, none of that. So um, I get a lot of questions from new users on this. You know, why can't I enter everything on the trip? Well, it's broken down into two steps. There's trips, and then under the trip is reservations. And that is done by design because there are going to be times where you might use more than one supplier to get everything booked. So let's say you use a supplier for the air and the land, but then you use a second supplier for your transfers and maybe a third supplier for your insurance. In that situation, you're dealing with you know multiple booking numbers. You've got sales with several different suppliers. You most likely have commission coming from several different suppliers, and you want to be able to track all of that accurately. So you'd have those as separate reservations within the trip. So in, in the example I just gave, you'd have one trip with three reservations under it. Uh, invoicing is done at a trip level so it's okay you can have separate reservations but it will show all of that on a single invoice so that's why it's broken down into two steps so now that I've got my trip created I'm going to add a new reservation here 
and this is where the details go however again you're going to notice you can't enter the totals here these are grayed out that's the next question I get a lot of um, and I'll show you why here in a second on this so for the reservation type we're going to select a package and for the supplier in this case I'm going to say it is travel impressions and then for the booking number I'm going to go ahead and put that in here and this is really all I need to enter if I'm importing from a supplier. So you put these three items in here and you can import it after that. Now before I go on to that step again if you select package and then you select your supplier if the supplier you're looking for is not in this list it can be added and I will have a video on that as well. So I've got these three items in here and I'm just gonna click this update reservation from supplier button. And now Vacation CRM is requesting the information from VAX to pull it in to this reservation and now it is done. <clears throat> so you can see I have this uh, successful message here. I've got the deposit amount, the deposit due date is entered. Now this is another thing that is uh, pretty important because when you run reports later on you can typically run most of the system reports by booking date or trip date. Um, if you run them by booking date this is what it uses to, to enter that um, booking in that category when you're filtering through by booking date so if this is blank or if it's you know last last year for whatever reason you accidentally put 2019 um, it will not show up when you look at things booked in 2020 so keep that in mind um, basically you always want to have the deposit due date in here even if it's already been deposited on I've got my totals in here it will also pull in uh, with with most suppliers it will pull in the names as you have them booked and their dates of birth as you have them booked so it's a good idea to just double check this quickly to make sure um, they, they match the clients names how they're spelled you could have a typo in there and that'll tell you that you booked it that way too so you need to go fix that um, it also pulls in the commission so this is the total commission that will be paid out to the agency for this booking this is the agents portion of it so in each user settings there is a uh, percentage you can enter if you have ICs that are on a split with your agency you can put in 80 70 60 whatever percent they're on and it will calculate their portion of it here but where this really saved me time is you can see it pulled in all the flight details for me separated out it pulled in the hotel the transfers everything automatically for me so I didn't have to manually enter any of this so because it's already entered for me really the only thing I need to do in this case is just kind of move stuff around to put it in chronological order if you want it to be in order on the invoice so right now the the component on top is the clients flights from Atlanta to Cancun which is correct but once they get into Cancun there's typically a transfer now this is a fake booking that was done and actually it's got duplicate transfers on it uh, for some reason so I'm going to delete this extra transfer because it's really not needed it's showing they have shared and private transfers here so I'm going to delete the shared and I'm just going to leave the private so this one needs to go after the first hotel or I'm sorry the first flight so I'm also going to while I'm at it I'm going to put Amstar in here and then I'm just going to grab this to move them around you have to grab them by the header up here anywhere on this bar you just hold your mouse down and then once you start dragging it will collapse all of the other components and just look for this and you can see transfers on top I want to move it down one notch and I want to put it right after the air so now we've got air and transfer and then of course I want to put my hotel after the transfer so I'm going to go ahead and grab this start dragging it up and I want to put it right after the transfer so now I've got air transfer hotel and then the flight back home and I've got insurance last here now sometimes when you import from a supplier it will pull in some extra stuff like this here like this price match plus or identification required for travel typically you may not want those to be on the invoice so you can just check this do not show on invoice now in theory you could delete these and you know something like this it would be no issue to just delete it I almost always just say do not show an invoice because it's faster but another reason why I do that is because sometimes when you book stuff that has a booking promotion on it like this save up to two hundred dollars 
I probably don't want that to show on the invoice. However, if I delete it, you'll notice here it's got a negative dollar amount. So that's part of the promotion that you book this trip under to calculate the correct price. So if I were to just delete this, it's going to take out that negative $114 and increase the total trip cost by $114, which is not correct. So I'm just going to say do not show on all of this stuff. And the service fee here, anything I don't want to show, I'm just going to say do not show. And of course, you can just save this along the way. So I'm going to save it as is for right now, but there's a couple of other things I might want to change here. So moving down um, for the transfer. You can also put um, invoice comments. These always show up on the invoice. So here you might say, and tell them what they need to do to find their transfer at the airport. Um, same thing for the hotel. You can see this stuff came in from Travel Impressions. So maybe I want to leave it. Maybe I want to delete some of it. Um, delete all of it. A lot of agents use this to put in things that you requested uh, when you book the trip, like you know, honeymoon couple or ocean view, or request this or that, uh, just to show the client this is what I requested when I booked this. Another thing while we're on the hotel that you might want to do here is select the hotel chain. And again, this list is customizable. So in this case, I'm going to select Royalton. There's also a couple reasons why you want to select the hotel chain on all of your bookings. So one is whatever chain you select here plus whatever price you have in here is added to the revenue by hotel chain report. So if you sell a lot of, say, Royalton in this example, it's one of your go-tos. And if you want to run a report, there is a revenue by hotel chain report. Now, in order for that to be accurate, you have to have the price entered in here, and you have to have the hotel chain selected on every single booking that you've done with them. Um, so that way it can be added to that report. Another reason is um, most of the all-inclusive chains and even some of the destinations have uh, pre-registration programs where you pre-register your bookings for points that you can use for different things. Uh, as of today, we are integrated with a couple of those. So if it's an AIC or Hard Rock booking, um, as well as Charisma for hotels. As of today, if I were to select one of those two, I would have a button here to register it with the hotel chain. And that will actually send it off to my Hard Rock account or my Charisma account for me. Uh, this register with Tourism Board, this is for the St. Lucia Tourist Board. We are also integrated with them, so if it's a booking to the destination of St. Lucia, you can pre-register those. Now in this case, it's Mexico and it's Royalton, uh, which we are not integrated with, so you would need to go manually register it however you normally would. However, you can mark it as registered here for your own record. So you would just select uh, Royalton here, and you could say I did it on today's date, click Create, and now it's marked as registered. And now you can run a report to make sure you're not missing any of those. So anyway, you move stuff around, you put your notes in, clean it up however you'd like, save it along the way. Once you feel like you've got everything entered and it looks good on this screen, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do here is preview the invoice. Now it'll open a new tab with the actual invoice. Here's an example of what that invoice will look like. Um, obviously this would be your agency's logo, not ours. This is the client's info, this is the agent's info. And then you can see this is why I put everything in order. It's just easier for the client to follow along. So you can make sure everything looks good. And sometimes when you see the actual PDF, you'll see mistakes. Like I forgot to finish typing this note in here. Um, but anyway, look through it. Make sure the pricing looks good. Here are the totals. Here are your terms and conditions, which are customizable. I'll have another video on that. Uh, but check out the preview. Now, if on the preview you saw an issue, go in here. Like if I want to finish typing this note, you know, do so, save it again, preview it again. Now once you are satisfied with the preview, there's no other changes to make, then you can click Generate Invoice. Now Generate will also try to open another PDF, but in this case we looked at it and I didn't actually make any changes, so I don't need to look at it again. Um, but what Generate does is it actually attaches a copy of this version of the invoice to the client's trip. So I'm going to click on the trip name up here to go back to that trip screen where I started. And you can see that the stuff I left blank is all filled out now. So I've got all of this in here. And I've got a reservation under here. And I've got an invoice here. So um, 
the reason I said you always want to preview first is because every time you click generate invoice it will attach another version of the invoice here so if you were you know editing it and fixing it as you see issues if you were using the generate button that whole time you might have five or six invoices here which most of them are incorrect because you were still fixing things in the reservation so only generate after you've you fixed everything and you're satisfied with the preview and then going forward you can generate a new invoice after every payment or if the client adds an excursion or something like that anytime there's a change then you would generate a new invoice and you can use the email icon to email it to them so anyway that's how you import a booking from supplier that should be everything you need to know uh, look for other videos on how to use the stripper or how to manually import and then several other features throughout the system thank you